press conference, we had head coach Tony Gustafson and captain Samantha Kerr. Tony, can you start us off with what are your thoughts now that the squad is in? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm really exciting. We're getting closer to the Olympics now and it's a lot of excitement for me and, and for the group, both staff and players. Uh, I also want to reach out and thank every single player that made this decision very tough for me. Uh, it's been a lot of players in camps, a lot of players performing both in, in club environment and, and in camps. So the decision making process has been thorough, uh, long, difficult, which it should be for a head coach. But once I do decide which one I'm going to bring to the Olympics, I'm feeling really, really happy with this roster. Um, it's a roster with a lot of mixture of experienced player and youth. Uh, there's also a lot of versatile players in the roster that can play multiple positions, which you need in Olympics. And also there's an attacking balanced roster, uh, as you can see. There's a lot of uh, attacking quality in this group. So we're not going to take a step back in Olympics, we're going to take a step forward. Uh, that's what the Matillas is about. Sam, this is your second selection for the Olympics. How does it feel to be heading to another Games? Yeah, it's a really proud moment for me. Obviously, going to an Olympics is, you know, every kid's dream is when you're growing up. Um, and to do it with this team for the second time is a really proud moment for me. It's definitely not something I take for granted. Um, I love this team. I love the girls I play with. So to be able to go and represent like our country with with them is, yeah, dream come true and really proud moment for me. And also my family, it's second time. It's something I don't take lightly. Okay, we'll open the floor to questions and starting it off with Tracy Holmes from ABC. Thanks for that. Um, hi to both of you. Uh, my question is about expectation, and I seem to always be asking about this, but, you know, as the countdown to the Olympics now gets closer and closer and becomes more and more tense, people always talk about who are our medal chances. The Matildas always feature prominently. So Tony, I'd like to know what your reality is in that department and then Sam, does your reality match Tony's or do you have different expectations to the coach? Well, Tracy, first of all, I like your questions. I always do. We've spoken about this before. I think it's a valid question. Um, and you can answer these questions in, in two different ways. There's people around me saying, hey, Tony, you have tough preparations, looking at the ranking, looking at the year that you missed with COVID, uh, looking at players coming back from injury, the chances are not really big to make an, an impact in the Olympics. Isn't it tough? Hasn't been challenged since performances. I've said from the day one, we're not going to make any excuses. We're going to go there and play. We're going to do the best we can. Uh, and we've, we've always focused from the day one I came in, we focused on getting one day better. And Sam spoke about the passion and the love for this team. If you saw these girls on the training ground, how, work, how hard they work, you should have seen them yesterday. We are really running them hard right now because we know we're going to be one of the fittest team going into that Olympics. Uh, in terms of that, we focus on doing everything we can with minimum time to prepare, prepare ourselves as best can be come that opening game on the 21st. And once that's there, what we are focused on is to make sure we leave every ounce of ourselves in every single game, every single minute, uh, and then the result take care of itself. Yeah, I think that's Tony's job to talk about expectations. My job is to worry about performance. Um, and for me, the first, the most important game is the first game, um, playing New Zealand. And that's all I've really thought about. That's all I'll worry about until I get to the Olympics. And um, what better way to start the Olympics than against our rivals, New Zealand. So it's going to be a good game. And um, the only thing I'm worried about is how I perform and how the team performs on that day. Um, and it's a tricky tournament, so every game is really important. So that first game for us is, is like the final at this point. Thank you. I'll go to uh, Melissa. Hi, Tony and Sam. Hi. Hello. Um, Tony, your motto is one day better. Um, how have you witnessed this? Um, since taking charge of the Matildas, is there a specific example that you've worked on with the girls that you feel has brought you um, where you are today? Yeah, first of all, I think I was very lucky to arrive to a team that already had a mindset of wanted to improve and wanted to develop. The inner drive in this team 
is, is huge. Uh, and a lot of them have said that they, they want to take themselves and the team to the next level. So the inner drive is kind of there. It's filtered that one to a mindset. My experience is working with, with the successful athletes and, and team is the one that really stands out from the average is the one that has that inner drive to always want to get one day better. Whether that's a finishing exercise on the field to get better at finishing, whether it's a defending session to work on one with one defending, whether it's uh, us being creative and look outside the box to uh, develop like we did in winter time, meaning we couldn't be together in COVID, but we tried to get better by these type of meetings that we have now. Um, so in every aspect, I think what we've done is trying to remind ourselves about that mindset that when we wake up every morning, we have no choice but to get one day older, but we do have an active choice to get one day better. And that mindset is just establishing more and more and better and better for every day. But already when I arrived, it existed. It's just sharpen it and make it even better. That's exciting. Thank you and best of luck. Thank you. Thanks very much, Melissa. Angela Bacic. Hi, Tony and Sam. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask about um, the conditions that you're going to face here in Tokyo. Obviously, the summer here is um, quite warm and quite humid. So, how are you trying to adapt to that? Is it that first game? Is it that, that pre game you have against Japan in Osaka? Or are there any kind of message you're implementing um, ahead of the first game against New Zealand? Well, we're working very hard to make sure we are the fittest team, but also adjusted to the heat. So I think Sam can tell a little about training <laughs> yesterday, <laughs> what we did to, to make sure we, we prepare. Yeah, believe it or not, it's actually been hot here in Sweden. <laughs> Didn't think it was possible, but um, no, we've been training with extra layers on, um, obviously. With the heat not being the same as Japan, we've been doing things to... Um, keep our body temperature high throughout training, um, extra layers of clothes, rain jackets, all that. But look, in a week's time, we'll be in Japan um, and we're used to that. We've played in China many times with Asian Cups, all those types of things. So when I look at the squads that we're playing, I think we're probably best fit for that in the group. We've been to China so many times. We're from Australia. We're used to that. It will take a few days, of course, but... I, I think that game in Japan will be really good for us, training in Japan. But um, yeah, you can bet that the Aussies will, will be ready for the heat. <laughs> Thank you guys. Best of luck. Good. Looking forward to seeing you here. Thanks, Angela. Joe Barton. Uh, hi, guys. Um, Tony, uh, you, you mentioned how uh, tough it was to kind of whittle this squad down to 18. What, what is it that excites you most about the squad? There's, there's quite a lot of attacking options and a bit of youth there. What, what really pleases you with the squad that you've picked? First of all, what excites me, which always is the core of any team that wants to perform in a tournament, is that you have to have the chemistry. You have to have that family feeling uh, within the group. And that's what excites me the most being part of this. Sam mentioned early on in this uh, press conference as well how much the team means to her. And you can see it. Uh, and I wish I could explain, because I can't do it in words, but I wish I could explain how much Sam has contributed to that team spirit as a captain and how much she means for me as a head coach. Because without a captain running the team the way she does, it doesn't matter what I do as a coach in tactics and such. So, so for, what I'm most excited about is that team chemistry that this player sh is, is showing. It, it's unbelievable. I'm so happy and proud to be a part of that Matilda family feeling. Um, the second, if we look specifically football-wise, uh, like I said, I like the versatility that a lot of these players have because I know from experience in an Olympic tournament with, with a smaller number of roster, you need players to be able to play in multiple positions, especially when there's very few days in between the games. Uh, and the other piece I like is that there's a, a, a nice mix between different type of players. You have everything from unique pace uh, to, to strong players, to smart players in terms of the, the playmaking roles. So there, there's a good mixture there. Uh, and obviously we're overloaded with the attacking talent. So the tough decision was to have to leave some of those attacking talents outside of this roster that actually have the quality to be part of an Olympic roster. But the competition for that spot is, is really, really tough. And I had uh, one question about your, the two teenagers you um, Kyra and Mary, um, obviously very exciting talents in their own right. Um, what do they bring to the squad and I suppose why do you have the confidence to, to pick two young, young girls um, and you know, going to a big tournament like the Olympics? 
I've, I've said from day one that for me, age doesn't really matter. Uh, the only thing I look at is quality and character. Do they have the quality to play at international level? Do they have the character to play at the international level? Um, and whether that's a player that is 35, that is now debuting in an Olympic roster, or whether it's a, a teenager, to me, it doesn't really matter, to be honest, because it's about quality and character. And both of those have shown, both in training and game times that I've had, that they are ready for the next level. Uh, it will be um, a different thing to go into that pressure moment and that pressure bubble. Uh, I expect them to always push for minutes and, and keep driving themselves like they do in training. But I also want to be clear here, it's not them carrying the team and we should expect them to, to have the, you know what I'm saying, like it's the first one, so we need to give them a little bit of time as well. But they wouldn't be part of this roster if I didn't think they had a f football quality to contribute. Thank you. Uh, ben from Channel 10. Oh, I'm sorry, I've been having some massive technical issues, so I'm late to the party. But uh, Sam, just a general question, how excited are you to be captaining this particular squad going for your second games and, and what do you expect from this squad? Yeah, I'm really proud to be first of all going to the Olympics and I guess I feel, yeah, I guess super, super proud to be able to captain this team once again. I don't take it for granted. Every time I walk out with this team, I feel really proud and humbled, but to wear the captain's armband at an Olympic Games, it will be my first time. So I'm really excited. I think, um, this squad's special. I think um, we've we've had such a long time together now, but you can see from the get-go, like Tony said, this team's special. Um, we are like a family here, so it's really special to be going to an Olympic Games, and I can't wait. I'm ready to start that game, the first game already. Um, we've got a little bit of a countdown going on, but yeah, we're just really excited. Bit of work to do still, but can't wait. The goals have kind of been coming at the wrong end the last um, four or five games. How important to get a win against Japan in that, in that warm-up match and, and can we turn things around in time? Yeah, look, it's a process. Um, I think people from the outside just see the goals going in, but for us it's it's not been about those games. Of course you want to win every game that you play, but it's a process. It's about that first game at the Olympics and it's about winning a medal at the Olympics. Um, we had a new coach, we had a new squad during COVID time, so Although we, we want to perform every single game, it's been a process about getting to where we want to be come the Olympics. Um, and I think over the last three weeks, we've, we've learned a lot, we've gained a lot, but it's still part of the process. And we've still got three weeks to go, three weeks to prepare for that Olympic Games. And we always knew it would be tough coming in with COVID times, new coach, but um, I think the way the team stuck together is, is really a testament to how close we are as a team. Thank you. Uh, Brenton Speed. Hi Tony. Um, the squad uh, features at least Kellen Knight, who we haven't seen for a long time coming back from injury. Um, and Chloe Picasso has been out of the equation a lot lately as well. Uh, is this your squad? You've talked about a collaborative effort before, or did Mel Andretta was she having a major influence on the selection of this squad or how did it all come about? Well, first of all, I want to credit all the staff around me for all the work they're doing, sometimes in the background. Uh, and it's amazing to see how many hours they put in and the passion they, they show. And that's been from the very first day. Everything from uploading games and individual clips from an analyst um, perspective with Marty uh, to Mel establishing a scouting network in the W League, watching every single game live there. Um, so the reports from, from those games and then all the camps we had, two ID, talent ID camps in, in Australia. And then obviously here as well, uh, analyzing every single training session from individual basis off and on the ball. Um, and uh, Marta with his analyst team as well. Um, so for sure, there's been a lot of input from other staff, but at the end of the day, it's obviously my decision as a head coach, but without my support staff around me, it, I couldn't do the job properly. So I, I definitely have a lot of help from them. Um, so for sure, they meant a lot in the decision-making process, even though the final decision is up to me as a head coach. And the Kellen Knight, is she ready if the game was tomorrow to play, or is she still building up? 
to fitness because she's been out for a long time. Uh, she has, and that was uh, one, a part of that process. I can inform you a little bit of that one. I, I've been lucky to, to be able to see her in training environments. So I've been visiting her at her club in Stockholm and, and watch her in training to get updated exactly how she's looking in training. I was also fortunate enough to bring her into the June camp to see where she's at. And after that June camp, we kept in close contact with our Triple M team and, and uh, Hammarby's, which is the club she's in. And I kept close contact with the coach and KK herself as well. And I made a decision based on where she's at. And I am certain that she will be ready come Olympics, but she also has spent a lot of time outside of the pitch. So will she be ready for a 90 minute back to back to back to back? Probably not, but with her experience and the type of player she is, I value her qualities a lot to be part of this roster because she can play in multiple positions and she has an experience that means if she steps in in the pressure cooker for 20 minutes in any game, in any position, I know that she can deliver because she's also very mentally strong. Uh, but we're working very hard together with her now, especially herself, to make sure she is as fit can be come that opening game uh, in the Olympics. Thanks, Brenton. Uh, David Mark. Uh, thanks very much. Um, to Tony, um, but specifically to Sam, this first question, I'd like you to both answer the second one if possible. Um, Sam, you referred earlier to the underwhelming performances when Tony first came into the job. Um, what was the biggest difference that you had to come to terms with in terms of his coaching style and how he may have changed the way the team plays? And, and again, to both of you, what gives you the belief that you can turn that around come the Olympic Games? Yeah, I think it's actually a funny one. There wasn't, to be honest, the way we play is what the team is. It's, it's, there's not that many changes. I think, of course, on the team sheet, there was a lot of changes, a lot of new people, a lot of new faces, but there, we actually haven't really changed the way we've played too much. I think with the qualities we have in this team, you'd be silly to change how we play. So. I think from the outside it might look like we changed the way we play, but we actually didn't. We just had to um, adapt to the squad we had and we were playing top quality opposition. So, um, of course, we were disappointed with the results because we want to win every game. But at the end of the day, we haven't really done too much different. We're sticking to how we play um, as the Matildas and I think people will see that. Um, going into the Olympics, but we're really excited about how we play and um, really, really, sh we're really confident in the way we play because we think it best fits our team. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, it is what it is. Results don't go your way sometimes, but we're going to be ready come the Olympics for sure. I think he's on mute. Sorry, I was saying, has Tony done, Tony, you can ask the question, what have you done to tweak the way the Matildas have been playing for uh, these are great questions. I can talk forever about this because I'm so <laughs> passionate about the game. But I think Sam has touched upon it. I, I, think, I, I think and hope that maybe I, I was offered this job because I have a lot of the same values as the Matillas has in terms of, of uh, the core values of the game, the principles of the game, meaning take a step forward rather than a step back, being attacking minded, being aggressive in defending and, and all those kind of things uh, and looking at attacking first and foremost. Um, so what we did in this process that Sam references, even though we had a very challenging April camp, when I knew we were going to play top opposition away in the first time in over a year, instead of being you know, careful and say, hey, we need to be conservative, let's take a step back, let's organize ourselves behind the ball and, and keep, it, keep it tight and be careful here now, we're playing away. We said, you know what, we need to be who we are, even though we have challenging circumstances. And it might cost us, um, you know, a punch here and there, and it did. But then the important thing there is what I think I, I hope I contribute to the team is the belief in the process. Because I've been through this before and I know what happens to a team that believes in the process enough, what happens at the end of that process. You get one day better and then come that tournament, you're peaking. So I guess the things that I've added is to make sure that everyone sees the same picture. Because I think Sam is touching on it. Everyone feels the identity already of what they're about, but then also see the nuances and the details of that picture. So come to that pressure cooker instead of maybe going back to my own habits that I do at Clubland, maybe some other players doing another thing at another club, we need to do the same thing in that pressure cooker, in that you know, important moment of a game, whether that's a 
defending set play or an attacking throw-in or that final pass that we're looking for, that everyone sees the same thing. And that's what we spend a lot of time working on in this transition camp. Those details and connections between the players so we all see the same things based on who we already are. Just a final question, so Kieran, yeah, thank you, David. Hi, Kieran, final question. Um, Tony, just a, a question about something you said in the last press conference about um, the starting 11 and the finishing 11. Of the first three games you've, um, you've coached with the team, give me an idea of who's better as a game changer off the bench and who's better to begin with. Um, not in that sense, but what I have learned more about the team is that we have a lot of game changers. And I know from experience, just look at statistics, and, and if, if you follow the Euros on the men's side, which we watch a lot here on our, uh, our time off the, off the field, uh, which also is kind of educational, to be honest, for both uh, staff and players. If you look at it, a lot of the games are won and lost in that last 30 minute period. Um, so even if you're not starting a game, it doesn't mean you're not important. It can actually be that you're even more important being a game changer coming off the bench. And I also think that that experience to understand that also makes the players more acceptable of potentially not starting a game because it doesn't mean you're not valued it's just that your qualities are valued off the bench as a game changer potential in this game so i think my job as a coach together with the coaching staff is to go into a game and kind of see the future in before what kind of game do we think this can be in the first half or the first hour and what kind of tools do we need from, from the bench, but also then balancing the physical load because that will be a thing you need to do in the Olympics. You need to balance that load because the intensity that we play with in that humidity in, um, in Tokyo, we also need to know that in a 90 minute back to back to back to back performance, you need to, to have the, that momentum going our way as much as possible and you can do that by using game changes. So I'd say I've learned a lot about how I can use them but it's not that one player fits a game changer role better than another, but on the day, one player can fit that better than the other, if that makes sense. Thank you. And can I ask a question to Sam as well? Just a final one. <laughs> yep. Um, you, you did an interview a couple of years ago, or last year on Foxtel with um, Tara Russian about when the tournament's putting pressure on themselves before the World Cup. How has the outlook changed going to the Olympics um, with the new coach? Yeah, I think it's all about learning experiences and I think that was definitely one for us. So, like I said before, it's a part of the process now and um, we're just taking it one game at a time. Um, I think if we focus on that one game and play every game like it's the final, I think we give ourselves a good chance. You know, we're really confident in our ability as a team. Um, and the Olympics is a different tournament to the World Cup. It's quicker, um, the games come around a lot quicker and it's a smaller tournament. So we're honestly just taking it one game at a time. We haven't talked about getting out of the group. We haven't talked about this. We've talked about that New Zealand game um, and making sure every single person is ready and prepared and we give our best, uh, put our best foot forward for the New Zealand game at this moment.